Welcome to Dordrecht, the place where I live since over 30 years. Dordrecht with a typical Dutch G in it. It's a place between uh, roughly Rotterdam and Antwerp. And Dordrecht um, for me symbolizes in the history of Holland, or better, the Netherlands, four themes. It is trade, it is shipping, it is democracy and it is religion. And the last two items, democracy and religion, you see symbolized in this window you see in the big church of the Grote Kerk of Dordrecht. Let's take a view at the glass pictures there. Typically for the four people there you see on the left hand side and right hand side two elders, but in between them it is William of Orange, or William the Silent, who is, I think, um, our present king is the 11th or 12th generation coming from him. And on the other hand, the guy with a long beard is probably, we don't know, is a reverend called Lipsius. And they are breaking the bread for evening supper, avondmaal, in 1574, which is two years roughly after Dordrecht was the place where the first free state meeting against the reign of Spain. So Dordrecht is the cradle of resistance against Spain and that was celebrated with a Protestant festivity. Protestant was already the dominating religion at that time after having defeated Spain and including Roman Catholicism. On the above you see a larger group of people. On the left hand side it is the guy we call Prince Maurits or Prince Morris. He is one of the sons of William of Orange, the admiral from the army. On the other hand side again a person with a long beard who is Reverend Bogerman and Bogerman was the chair of the Synod of Dordrecht. The Synod of Dordrecht took place from, I think it was November 1618 till May 1619, including 150 meetings. And the issue was which religion will the Netherlands have? Will it be a more, what we now know as traditional Calvinist religion, or will it be a more free and tolerant religion? At the end of the day, the choice was made for a more traditional Calvinistic religion. And you see Reverend Bogerman, who was very much in favor of that direction, sending out the persons, the Armenians, called after Reverend Arminianus, who were more liberal in their religious uh, ideas. And you uh, also can see Hugo de Groot, or Grotius, who was one of those of the more liberal vision. So in all, for me, the, the window here in the church symbolizes democracy on the one hand and sort of freedom of religion in the other hand also expressing after the Senate of Dordrecht that there was no interference from the state into the issues of religion. Uh, the window itself was established in 1954. It was sponsored by a person called Kraft with a double F, not Kraft of, of the US. And it is rather unique in the way that it symbolizes those two themes which are so very representative for the development of present Netherlands. In these days, in more formal settings, Latin was the obvious uh, language. You see Concordia Res Parve Crescunt, which uh, means something like united, also the small parts stand. And united means uh, the 20 cities that worked together with Dordrecht in their resistance against Philips, the king of Spain. And here we stand in front of the guild windows. The guild windows have been in the Dordrecht church in 2006. And the guild windows are much more realistic when you compare to the Kraftraum. Let me take you to the windows and the five layers I see in the guild windows. 
The below layer represents and depicts products that were made in the Middle Ages in the 15 and 1600s here in Dordrecht. There were around 40 of those guilds. You see bottles, pieces of carpenter, of painting, of uh, rope, shoes, etc. Then the layer above is um, a shore, the shore of the river, which in the third layer. And on the second layer on the shore you see the maker, the creative maker of the windows, Teun Hox. He is standing there as a, as a painter, because you also see the paint. He is standing there, he is looking into the future. You don't know what he is doing, but it makes you wonder. The third layer is the river. In the river you see several types of boats or ships. A larger one, a one that's carrying and shipping bulk. Many times it's inland shipping and you see on the right hand side a little pulling boat or tugboat. Above it, it's much more vague, is um, the, the, the green land with trees and above that the fifth layer. It's the air. So this window very much represents the effect of light, not only in the stainless steel of the glass windows, but also here in the church. So both windows symbolize, as I told you, the four themes that I have in mind when I think about Dordrecht and Holland. The gildenramen, or the guild windows, it's like trade, commerce, shipping, and the craft window, it's about our state's democracy and our, let's say, tolerance for religion. And that's all in this small area of the Dordrecht Church here in my hometown. <laughs>